Welcome to Joy Sparks. Joy Sparks is a project that's dedicated to sparking joy in our lives. We'll be releasing a series of videos through a number of different activities that generate joyful feelings. You can participate in Joy Sparks by watching our videos and commenting on the Joy Sparks forum at reachability.org forum. Sign up and tell us what sparks joy in your life. So I thought today might be cool to start off our Joy Sparks project by talking about accessible, simple ways which we can find joy in our lives. So take a stroll with me. We're going to find some fun stuff outside and see ways in which we can find joy in the little things. So as we were looking around out here, most people would probably just look around and see plain green grass and that's not very joy sparking or exciting, but we found a few things. So the first thing was a dandelion. And at first you might think, well, how does a dandelion spark joy? Most people even mow over them and get rid of them or try to weed them out of their gardens, but they're actually quite important. So if you don't know, dandelions are one of the first sources of food for bees for a year. And if you don't know how important bees are, especially for food source, I encourage you to look it up. We actually have some bees painted on our planter over here. So when it comes to bees and pollination, especially food, I don't know about you, but food certainly sparks joy for me. So when I see dandelions, I'm reminded that the bees are coming. This is their food source. Leave some dandelions alone, and then that'll give us a bunch of delicious fruits and veggies for the year. The other thing that we noticed as we were walking out in this green field was that a little white flower, which you may not know at first, but this is actually the beginning stages of a strawberry. So there's some strawberries in our reachability garden that we grow here. And I don't know about you, even though the flower is cute and for me sparks joy, but a delicious, juicy, red strawberry in the middle of the summer is one of the most joyful experiences ever. So these are two ways that you can look around and say, what sticks out to me about this environment? What stands out? What might be different? And if you think about the mindset of finding things that are different and we find them interesting or we are drawn to them, think about how that might translate to humans who we feel drawn to. And if we see maybe someone who we think is different than us or who is labeled as different, maybe that can be a nice metaphor for us to remind ourselves to draw ourselves closer to them or maybe draw them in closer to us. So two cool little joyful things that we found just in our beginning of our journey out here in the grass. Another cool thing that we found as we were looking at the trees and the different bushes that are out here is this leaf. So I thought this leaf was kind of neat looking and I was initially, you know, I felt drawn to it because again, it looked different. And so if you take a look at the leaf, it has some different, different um, shapes here. And there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's actually nine leaves on one branch. And I thought that was really cool. I, it stood out to me. And I feel like things that capture my attention and capture my interest do spark joy for me. Which brings me to a point that sometimes if joy isn't jumping out to us or it's not our main experience in life, sometimes we have to search for it and sometimes we have to create it. And maybe you can make meaning out of something that feels joyful. So if I saw this and I thought, whoa, that's really neat. Look at all of the veins in the leaf and look at all of the different dots on the leaves. Anything that is interesting or we would label as beautiful or cool or whatever word you want to use, for me, that sparks joy. So this leaf I thought was really neat. Um, it drew me in and it captured my attention in my eye. Again, that point of it was different. It was the thing that stood out to me because it didn't look like everything else around it. Let's take a break from leaves for a sec. And I wanna show you this cool rock that I found. If you can see that. So if you take a look at this rock, it's very intricate. There's all kinds of different designs, different lines, different colors, different patterns. And it's quite smooth. It's very smooth. It's like a river rock almost. And so as we were looking around, I was looking down, of course, caught the flowers caught my attention in my eye, but this rock stood out to me as well. 
And sometimes, especially if we're walking through a rocky area, we might not think, oh, I'm looking for unique rocks today, or oh, this rock stands out. Usually we're on a mission or we're on a hike and we're not really looking down because we want to be safe and look up. But sometimes you might see a rock that stands out to you for whatever reason. It might not be as intricate and detailed as this, or it might just have a cool shape. Like I like finding heart-shaped rocks. I don't know about you, but that's something I always have my eye out for. Um, or rocks that have an interesting, some of them look like letters sometimes. They're in the shape of a letter. So I loved this rock and I wanted to do an activity that I encourage you to do as well, which is learning to identify with nature. So how we can embody properties of nature and how we can see those reflected in who we are. And so one of the ways I wanna encourage you to do that and show you to do that is called the I am practice. So what I want you to do is if and when you're out in nature next, just find something that sticks out to you, whether it's a rock or a leaf or a flower, and pick it up and just kind of hold it and examine it. And think about how you would describe this. So just take a sec, I'm just gonna take a sec and think about all the ways in which I would describe this rock. And then I'll tell you the activity and the purpose of it. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna describe this rock in my best description, but I'm gonna use I am statements. So I'm gonna be talking about the rock, but I'm gonna be using I am, and I'll talk about the purpose after. So as I look at this rock, I am smooth. I am detailed. I am multicolored. I have different lines. I am teardrop shaped. I am a little complicated. <laughs> My patterns are a little chaotic. So when we describe something in nature using I am statements, it gives us a few things. First, it gives us the reminder that we are actually nature. We are a part of nature. We are not separate from it. We ingest it, we breathe it in, we swim in it, we walk on it. We are a part of nature. We are not separate. So it really gives me that reminder of oneness. We are one with nature. Another thing it does is it helps me disconnect the identity of labels. So if I say I am complicated like this rock, I don't really feel any sort of particular way toward that statement. Whereas if you came to me and said, you know what, Amanda, you're kind of complicated. I might have an emotional reaction to that and think oh, you're judging me or you're making an assumption of me or this person doesn't like me or I'm doing something wrong or bad. But when we think about a rock, like, oh my gosh, the patterns on this rock are kind of complicated. We don't have an emotional reaction to that. And so it reminds me that when somebody describes me in a way similar that I would describe something in nature, I don't have to react to that. So I was saying earlier, um, I picked up a rock that was round and I said, okay, I'll use the statement, I am round. And my colleague laughed and said, oh, I probably wouldn't be preferred to be called that. Me neither, who wants to be called round? But if we think about it, you know, what does round mean? Am I gonna look at this rock and think, oh, this rock is round, therefore it is some judgment or some assumption? No, because it's a rock, it's just a part of nature. So if we can apply that same mindset to ourselves and think it's really not a judgment, it's a description, and also I don't have to hang on to it. I don't have to believe it or accept it, I can just let it go. This rock isn't gonna remember that we called it chaotic and complicated. That's not, that's not gonna be a thing. So I really love that exercise to remind us that we are it and it is us and that we can drop labels sometimes. We don't always have to over identify with the things that people call us or say about us or the things that we say about ourselves. So let's move on to our next piece of joy. 
So another simple, accessible, easy, free way that we can look for joy is trying to challenge ourselves maybe to look for some joy in spaces or environments or areas that don't pop out to us right away. So I'll give you an example is right back here. We might not necessarily look at this environment and think it's the most joyful. However, sometimes if you slow down, take a look at your environment, let yourself just kind of gaze without judging, you'll find really fun things. So sometimes when we're at reachability and we look out our window, there's deer back here. So we see deer, mama deers and baby deer going on a walk, eating the grass. We see pheasants, we see different types of birds. Um, there's a train track. Some people really love trains. So when the train goes by, the kids in our building get really excited or train enthusiasts get really excited. Also in the background, you might think, you know, it's kind of messy looking back there. But if you think about art, art in general, landscapes, we can actually find beauty and joy in mess. And again, that's a really nice analogy for life. Sometimes when we're in a mess, usually not when we're in it, but later with hindsight, when we look back, we realize we learned a lot from those times. And so we can grow, we can use those experiences as opportunities to do things differently. And then that helps us the next time we're in situations of mess or adversity to remember, hey, I got through the last time and I came out on the other end with some growth and maybe some different skills maybe an expanded perspective. So we might be tempted to label something as messy or ugly or not nice to look at. We don't really wanna be there, but we can find joy in the simplicity of the little things as well. And if we take time to just be present in those spaces, you might have a deer show up or a pheasant walk by, um, which is very exciting. Another thing we were thinking that you might not be able to see from this angle, but we can see up in our building from the reachability offices is there's actually a graveyard behind us. And while that might be a traumatic experience or space for some people, one way that we can find joy there is remembering that there's people there who were really loved and still are loved in their families and the continuation of their generations. So there's a lot of love that can be a reminder or it can be a reminder that there was once a lot of love experienced with these people. Some people, it's a peaceful place where they can go visit their loved ones and have that shared experience as well. So even though it might invoke some sadness or some grief or some loss, we have to remember for some people, it's actually a, a space of love and peace and joy as well. So sometimes in our adult lives, it is hard to find joy. Even the simple accessible joys of flowers and rocks and spaces that aren't necessarily the most aesthetic, don't do it for us. So sometimes we might have to tap into our inner child and do something fun like hula. <laughs> or try to hula. I don't know how successful we are. <laughs> Anything that you can do to make you laugh is a, an experience of joy. It puts you into a state of joy. Even the sound, the sound of the hula. Very fun. So we are out in the daycare area where the kids normally play. Let's go inside the house. Come join me in my house. Hi, welcome to my house. Want some breakfast? <laughs> Sometimes if you can't find joy in your adult life or in your inner child, you just have to go in your hidey hole and take a break and hide away for a little bit. So here I am in my house, in my break room in my office <laughs> and I'm still experiencing some joy and laughter. So there you go. Thank you so much for joining us today in our silly but joy-filled video of accessible, simple, fun ways that we can find joy that don't necessarily have to be over the top big experiences. My name's Amanda Grinter. I work with Reachability and I hope you'll join us for more of our gnaw content as well as joy sparks. If you'd like to watch more of our videos, you can go to reachability.org slash joy dash sparks. See you later. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. How do I get out?